Good morning, everyone. It's a good thing that we can come together to hear the word of the Lord, regardless of the medium. We are thankful for technology that enables us to share the word across boundaries. So let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are in control. You are seated on the throne, unshaken, not bothered, not afraid, by the things that we human beings are afraid of. We are only vessels in your hands. And we want to pray that your word that is active, alive, powerful, will overdue, will subdue everything else that wants to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. We want to pray for your anointing on this word that will touch your people, that will minister to their hearts. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's been a very difficult time for all of us as individuals, families, the nation of Uganda, and the entire world in this season of COVID-19. For us in Uganda, it's about eight months or more since this started affecting us. For other parts of the world, they've reached a year. And we are already just two months to the close of this year. I want to thank every pastor and leader that has continued to bring the word to us in these difficult times. I can assure you when times are tough, when no man has an answer, the word of God is where we should run. And I, among so many others, have been eating this word depending on it and it has taken us through and brought us this far. I was thinking about a wet sponge and what it does when it is squeezed. If you get a sponge and dip it in water or any liquid and squeeze it out, stuff comes out. It is the same for us. When tough times come, we truly see what we are really made of. And I felt... The word I should share today is, what do I have? So I'm asking you, what do you have? Now along this period, I've been able to go online and listen to talks and get information. And I got a picture that describes and shows what happens when people are faced with challenges, difficulties, crises. And when I looked at it, I realized that in this time of COVID, we have actually gone through this curve. It says when you get an issue that you are not expecting, like COVID, no answers, no assurance, the first reaction is shock. What? The news comes. You're in shock. The next step is denial. This can't be happening to me. It can't. To other people, but not to me. It goes on to frustration. Because it begins to dawn on you that 
This is actually happening. And you begin to say, this is unfair. Why did this happen to me? And then it goes to depression. Depression where you give up. No energy. No hope. No reason to live. That is the bottom, the bottom of the bottom. So you come from the other stages and go all the way down to depression. And then on the other side, the curve starts lifting up again. You begin to explore. And you say, maybe this can work. Maybe I can get a, a, a solution. Maybe so and so can help me. So from exploration, you go to acceptance. Then you say, okay, this might not be so bad after all. And then from acceptance, the last stage is commitment. And you say, I'm, I'm going to go through this. I've got it. I will make it through. And I want you to ask yourself, where on this curve are you right now? I think for some of us, if you look at Ugandans today, they passed the shock. They passed because right now, many Ugandans don't care about masks. They don't care anymore. But I have a feeling there might be some of us who are frustrated, who are depressed, and indeed times are so tough, we've lost jobs, salaries have been cut, there's no hope that you can see right now. But I'd like to come with encouragement to you today. And to say that regardless of the situation, God still is on the throne. And I was thinking about the different gifts God has given us. They haven't stopped because of COVID-19. Your personality has not changed because of COVID-19. And people handle situations differently. I'm very sure that those who are always upbeat and hopeful are the first ones to get out and say, let me find something else to do. But there may be some of us who are saying, now what, what is there for me? There's really no hope. I can't drag myself tomorrow. School has closed. The job has closed. Some of us may be really in that state where we are not yet sure what is going to happen. I want to encourage us this morning. God's gifts do not change with seasons. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verses 4 to 12, we see the Lord declaring that there are different varieties of spiritual gifts. Given by the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. Operating in believers. And it is the Spirit who grants them and empowers believers. And they have different varieties of ministries and service. But it is the same Lord who is served. There are different ways to work. But it is the same God who produces all things in all believers. But to each one, the Spirit 
has given an enablement for the common good. To one is given the message of wisdom to another the word of knowledge and understanding to another wonder working faith to another gifts of healing to another working of miracles ability to prophesy speaking a new message discernment of spirits Various kinds of tongues and interpretation. All these things and gifts are empowered for, for us by the Holy Spirit. For just as the body is one and yet has many parts and all the parts Though many form one body so it is with Christ. I want to say that for each of us, the gifts God has given us, they are for the blessing of the kingdom of God. Right now, the gift of God in you is needed by others around you. The world is hungry for these gifts in us. Is there anyone who doesn't want encouragement? Is there anyone who doesn't want to be loved? No one wants to be helped? No. In this tough, tough time, this is the time we rise up and take our gifts to expand the kingdom of God. Dr. Sam was preaching the other day that we are now a scattered church. And let me assure you, no one knows how long COVID is going to be there. But what we know is that our God still remains. And he has given us a duty. He's given us a job that we must do. Can we rise up and be the hands and feet of the Lord? Can we make the humans around us feel worthy what gift has God given you? And have you used it for his glory? One of the challenges with crisis is that you go back to self-preservation. The natural reaction is I must preserve myself. I must take care of myself. I must make sure food in my house is enough. When COVID began, I saw videos of people with their houses stocked from corner to corner with every supply. And the man would walk in every room and show you the rolls of tissue up to the ceiling. All the packed food to the ceiling. And he's trying to show people, I am okay. I've stocked up. How many supermarkets went dry in in minutes because everyone went to grab and grab and grab. I remember when the news started to say they are going to lock up here in Uganda. As a family, we were telling each other, stock up on food, stock up on beans, stock up on rice. Everyone was running to the wholesale shops. And the desire to self-preserve can go overboard into selfishness. Where it's all about you and you can't afford to share. 
I want to remind us as believers that is not our place. God blesses us that we may be a blessing. And what a blessing it is to share with others, with those in need and to know that you have made a difference in someone's life. Now is the time to be that person. The blessings and joy we receive outweigh what we have shared with those we have given. So when I ask you, what do you have? Maybe some of you are saying, in honesty, I don't have anything. But I want to throw a few ideas to you about what you actually have. And this can help you to get out from that low state and to start rising up again to have faith to have a desire to push on even in this time. I thought about number one, gifts and abilities and passions. Physical abilities, things you can do with your hands. COVID has caused people to remember their skills that they had when they were younger and now they've started using those skills. I know a number of women who are crocheting and knitting again. And they are selling those products. When the saloons closed, my help at home and my 11-year-old daughter who are gifted in things of hair and hairdressing. They started saying, let me plait your hair. And I became the dummy. And, and this is proof from my home that people are not joking. My daughter plaited my hair, finished it off, and I am now very sure that I will not keep concentrating on mathematics and science alone. But I must find a way to push her into her gifting. The second thing I thought about that I have and that you have access to knowledge. I tell you, the young people now who have smartphones, they can have data on that phone. What are you using that data for? What have you benefited from it? It shouldn't be passing time. But you can grow from accessing knowledge on the internet. When there was a total shutdown, and our offices were closed. I started reading on my own. I went on and let me tell you, Google will tell you everything you need to know. I started finding free courses online. You can read if you're in education. You can read things to do with your particular career. You can invest in areas because when you type in a particular area, it will give you details about that area. At that time, everything was free. All the webinars and talk shows were free. All you had to do was log in and listen. Access to knowledge. One of the big daughters in my home had always wanted to bake. And she had asked before COVID, she kept asking people, who can teach me how to bake? And they would tell her as little as, as little as 300,000 shillings. Up to 1 million shillings. 
Now this is someone who doesn't have 300,000. She, she cannot reach a million shillings. What did COVID do for her? COVID was I am called it. She got data. And started looking for recipes. On how to bake cookies. Cupcakes. Decorative cakes. Cakes birthday cakes. As we speak now, COVID has given her enough time to practice. We are now supplying cupcakes and cookies to the shops around our home. She learned by trial and error. The first round, they flopped. Second round, half rise, half don't. But let me tell you with persistence, she kept saying, let me try something else. Let me try something else. And she has gone a mile further. Access to knowledge. What do you want to know? Just get into Google and say, I want to know what is this, what is this, what is that? Another thing we have had and still have for some of us is a lot of time on our hands. I remember watching a pastor and he said, COVID has done it for me. I have rested. It is the only time as a pastor that I have rested. His family could now have him at home. Because we all know pastors are always on call. So and so is sick. So and so has died. So and so is unwell. Come, 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 come. Pastors, I hope you have rested. Children have celebrated that daddy is at home. Mothers are always there. Even when we work outside, we still have a way to go back home and get into the mix of things with the children. But fathers have been away from home. Now the children have seen the fathers. They've done experiments with daddy. Hopefully daddy has taught them some work they couldn't do before. Now maybe there are repairs in the house. Maybe broken cupboards have been sorted out finally. And I'm hoping that married couples have bonded a little more. Let me tell you before COVID, we all know we have been on a move. Morning, you get up at six, say goodbye, one goes to work, one goes to the other side, you come back in the evening, it's very late, good night, good morning, good night, good morning, good night. And we have seen the changes. With no time to just talk and relax and say, this is our life, what is going on. Those have been very rare before COVID. And I must say it's very sad that for some it has actually led to violence, physical violence. Because people who have not been together, who have been saying good morning and good night, now have to stay in the same room day and night for Eight months. I'm praying that you will rise up from that and begin to say, this is my spouse. Let me get to know a little more about them. What had I forgotten? This is the time I can begin to engage again and see how to be a better spouse for my spouse. We're still talking about time. When they shut the offices down, it meant I'm at home full time. Schools were closed. Most parents became full-time teachers. 
I know many gave up already. And they said they wait for the government to open. And that's when they will go back to school things. But my, some of the children in my home are on a syllabus that did not need to have them physically in school. But later on, even the ordinary school started coming up with, you know, Packages that you would go, pay a small fee, take home, and your child is able to do some work. I have had people in P6. I have one in P5. I have one in top class. And all of them are coming. Mommy, 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 question, answer, question, answer. Now, I have become a full-time teacher. And as I did this for my children, the neighbor started asking me, but the children are playing all the time and mine are studying. The children were asking, how come these ones are studying? And us, we are not. And you know, along the way, I realized, look, it doesn't hurt to teach one something. I am not a qualified teacher. I didn't go to teaching school. But what about you full-time teachers who are actually uh, skilled? You went to school, you have been a teacher, that has been your career. Have you helped anyone in the community? There are so Mitsukundu. many children just roaming around. How many girls have we had are pregnant? They have so much time on their hands. You can save someone. You can say, look, I went to S6. I can really surely help someone. Whatever class they are up to S6, I can help. Young adults, you can help. You have time. I know you may say, I, I'm looking for a job. I want to be paid. But in the meantime, you have time. You can do something. On top of being a, a school teacher, we realize now that we could not let the children sit for hours on the normal sermons like this one. So what that meant, I also became part of the Sunday school teachers. So we we'll take turns. My husband, the older daughter, we have been shifting like that. And there's such a joy I felt teaching the children lessons. And I kept asking them, what have you been learning? And the lessons are there. Proverbs 22.6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We have time to deal with our children and impart in them values. Even if you don't have biological children, children. You have children in your community who you can get and help in some way or another. You can check on the elderly, on the sick. You can volunteer somewhere. One of the young people who uh, calls me their mentor had reached a point where he was saying, I've looked for jobs, I've worked, I've given up. I've tried to keep my, my character and Christian values, but where I have taken my applications, nothing is coming, so I am going to be forced to try somewhere in the world. And I remember telling him, you know what, the Spirit of God is convicting you about waiting. Just be patient. Don't give up. Keep it up. Keep checking, keep searching, keep doing what you can. And he had time to walk. 
Two particular officers and knock and knock and give his CV and give his CV. And the person he met who was in charge just told him, well, we're not really interested. But he had time. He went back another day. And he found someone who's not the in charge. And he asked, is there work here? He said, oh, by the way, they're looking for someone to volunteer as so and so. And because I had initially told him, even if you get a volunteering opportunity, please go. He took it on. And what does that mean? If you are faithful at that place and work hard, why wouldn't they keep you on? Why wouldn't they start giving you a little allowance? And eventually, a, a position can come up. Where can you volunteer? You have time. Find where you can put your time to use. Another place you might have or another thing you might have. Land. COVID showed that food is the most essential thing. And some people who had looked down upon villages and said village is boring, now the village was full of people from the city running from COVID. Why? You just go to the garden and pluck a plant of matoki. You go to your garden and bring out cassava and potato. You're not stressed. I had a story of a young man who rode a physical bicycle. Physical, not a border. From Kampala all the way to Fort Porto. By the time he reached, he was finished. Because he, he had packed, I think, a little water. The government had warned all LCs if you see a new person, report immediately. So wherever he would go and stop for the night, he got problems. But you see, he said, I can't afford the rent anymore in Kampala. Mm. I finished my salary. What do I have? A bicycle. He rode all the way to Fort Port. Land is very, very critical for us right now. If you have land and it has been idle, I am hoping you've now started growing something there. For yourself, but also for sale. If you have land, you can actually loan it out. People can grow food on your land and pay you some money. It's being done. Use the land you have now. Do you have money saved up somewhere? Where can you invest it? COVID for me COVID is was a dress rehearsal of what the Bible says the end times will be like. In Revelation 13, 17, it says all will be compelled to be given the mark of the beast. And no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark of the beast. The Bible already tells us how it's all going to end. The enemy will have one last chance to try and take the world for himself. We've all had stories of the mark of the beast, six, triple six, when even growing up we knew it was one of those things we all wanted to know how, who, who is the, who is the antichrist, who is it? But the fact of the matter is that time will come. Pastor Laban has been talking about Christian communities for so many years. 
And if you're like me, it felt like far-fetched. It's still, well, it's far there. It's out there. But look at now an opportunity for believers to own large chunks of land where you can stay, where you can have industries, where you can have production, you can have schools. It means if everything else is shut down, you are already of and of yourselves sufficient in that area. So I began to see that this is probably how the Jews have managed to survive all these years. Because they had centers, they had a way to preserve themselves. And you might be saying, well, I don't have enough money to buy a share here or there. But I've begun to see the need to collaborate, to come together and say, Derek, you have this. You're my close friend in church. Why can't you bring part of it, I bring part, I invest, we invest in this thing together. Where are you going to invest the money you have that will bring you returns, not just ordinary returns, but things that will help the kingdom of God. What do you have? Con- connections. Personal networks. You have families. That should be the first place you go to market your service or product. One of the days in the past weeks, Mr. Chizito passed by my house and he was taking eggs to the neighbor. So I called him and said, Mr. Chizito, why have you never asked me if I would like some eggs? And he had no answer. So I quickly paid him money and bought a tray. I want to ask you who knows what business you have? Who knows what service you're offering? In this church alone, there are so many people with salons. We have hairdressers. We have people who are designing clothes and have clothes that they're, you know, tailoring. We talked about people crocheting and selling things. Have you gone to your personal networks and families and said, I have this product, I am selling. Tell everyone so that they buy from me. Let us support each other in this time. Do you have integrity and character? These, as believers, this should be unquestionable for us. I've seen people considered only because of that one reason. This person can be trusted, they have integrity. When the, the offices were shutting down and, and, deplo- and you know, laying off staff, who was left behind? Who are those that remained working? I can assure you it had to be those who are hard workers. Those who are not called all the time to do a job. Those who have integrity and can be trusted. Let me tell you, opportunities can be lost because of your personal brand. When people talk about you, what do they say? Can you seriously work on this? Can you begin to work on your personal brand and say, I as Gloria, when they say Gloria, what do people say when they talk about me? Because without that, opportunities become very minimal for you. 
But if you can prove yourself to be a hard worker, a committed worker, someone trustworthy, when names are being thrown around, your name will not miss. I want to encourage you. Work on your character. Work on your personal values. So that you're one of the few that are quickly thought about when opportunities arise. And above all, what do we have as Christians? We have the Lord. I can assure you in the toughest of times, the one thing that has been my anchor is that I have the Lord in my life. He is our hope in a hopeless world. I know some of you could have seen videos of, of people with money to the ceiling, billionaires just throwing themselves off the building. Why? Their whole families got wiped away in COVID. And someone sits and says, what have I left in this world? And the only solution he sees, let me take my life. As a Christian, I've come to remind you that when there is no way out, the Lord is your anchor. Hebrews 13.5 tells us he will never leave us nor forsake us. Colossians 1.27 says that we have this hope of glory which is Christ. Christ. There is hope beyond the now that we can see with our eyes. Do you have that hope? If you have Jesus, then that hope is yours. John 16, 33, the Lord promised us, in this world, you will have tribulation, distresses, but be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. John 14, 27, peace I leave you, do not let your heart be troubled. Nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. And guess what? He didn't just promise and stay away. In John 14, 26, he tells us, he was telling the disciples, but we are now his disciples as, as believers. Listen to the description of the Holy Spirit. But the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener the stand by the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things the Holy Spirit is with us. He is there to guide. He is there to encourage. Counsel. Comfort. You are not an orphan. Child of God. You have God himself in your life. Upholding you. That is who you have. The psalmist said if God be for us. Who can be against us? You can seek guidance for the Lord in this time. I know many of us have been praying. Maybe the answers haven't yet come. I want to encourage you. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Because the Lord will surely give us a way out. I remember the scripture in Jeremiah 6.16. And the people were being told. Stand by the roads. And look. And look and ask for the ancient path where the good way is then walk in it and you will find rest for your souls 
When I read Psalm 40, verse 1, he was able to say, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of a horrible pit. COVID has been a horrible peace. I want to believe that as we continue to cry to the Lord, he will give us answers. Psalm 32 verse 8. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and my eye will be upon you. One of the verses I learned to memorize that has taken me through troubles and valleys of life is Psalm 138 verse 8. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for my life. When everything is shaking around you, remember the Lord will fulfill his purpose for your life. As I've listened to news and watched it, I see again and again that the wickedness in the world is increasing. Just the other day on WhatsApp, I saw a picture of a judge in the United States or one of those European countries legalizing incest. A brother and sister were finally allowed to get married. And they were celebrating. Finally, we've got our way. We see all around us everything going down and under. Immorality increasing to heights we could not even imagine before. What do you have? You have the Lord. You are able and you must choose to remain on the narrow path and serve this God who has given his all for you. We have examples in the word from people living in wicked times and they did not give in. We know Lot, as far back as you can imagine, as far back as Genesis, Lot is surrounded by wicked men. And God had to go and drag him out. We know Dan Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach who were willing to die and they said we will not bow down. We shall not worship the image. We shall not stop praying. And they were able to stand the test of time. Paul in Philippians 3.8 was able to declare I consider everything dung. You know, he could have said rubbish but in some translations they call it dung, like you know the waste of animals. He said, I consider it all nothing except to continue to seek out and understand the Lord my God. So with all these pressures around you, the temptation is there to say, you know what, I have held on but I can't anymore. I want to tell you that Remember how God has seen you through in the past. You have a memory. Some of us have written in the diaries. We have them and they are old and packed away. Get them out and read and say what was going on years ago when I was in this valley. Remember how the Lord has seen you through before. And get strength to 
keep on going on. Psalm 77, 11 says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. David had a habit of meditating on the Lord. And he would remember the battle the Lord saved him from. And how he was being chased. And how he was being looked for. And he said, I will remember the works of the Lord. Child of God, remember where the Lord has brought you from. Ecclesiastes 1.9 declares there is nothing new under the sun. For us in this generation now, COVID is one of the most scaring things we have experienced. But in 1918, there was something called the Spanish flu. And it lasted from February 1918 to April 1920. And infected 500 million people. And that was about a third of the world's population at that time. So you can actually say COVID has happened before. But it was a different strain. And what does that mean? It is possible that a few years, we don't know how long or how, whether it's months or years with a talk of vaccine and all sorts of things being said we will be looking back and saying can you imagine in 2020 there was a disease called COVID-19 this too shall pass and when it has passed and another crisis comes and another one comes what are you going to do? What will you have learned? You now have an experience of what life can be because of COVID. You should be able to say I need to prepare for anything that can happen in the future. Will you be found faithful? Like the saints of old, will you be found faithful? Or will you say, you know what? I couldn't manage, I gave up. I want to encourage you. Like Ephesians 6.10 says. And I want to close with that scripture. I like it in, um, in uh, Amplified Version. Because it gives some detail that is really encouraging for me. So we're going to read verses 10 and 13. And it says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from Him and be empowered through your union with Him. And in the power of his boundless might. When you go to verse 13, it says, therefore, put on the complete armor of God. And that scripture tells us what the armor is like. The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. So when he talks about put on the complete armor, those are the issues they are asking us to have on us. So that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. 
and having done everything that the crisis demands stand firm in your place fully prepared immovable victorious I want to ask us brethren what is it we have we have so much that can still be of use in the kingdom of God today we have a faith that cannot be shaken. The Bible tells us those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Rise up. Stand firm. Stake your feet in and say, I am not giving up. I know teachers who have gone into construction business. I know people who are no longer teaching. They are going and getting things from up country and bringing them back to sell. People who have said, I'm not giving up. I have a future. I have family. I have children. We can't afford to give up. What do you have? What can you use? The Lord is asking us, use what you have. Use what you have. And the song came to my mind. When the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be among them. We don't know how much time we have left. But can we decide to live a purposeful life? That is a blessing. That like our sister Nachito who passed on a few weeks ago. When you look back, when people look at your life, they say this was surely someone that brought joy and brought goodness and was a blessing. I want to be a blessing. And I want every believer to be a blessing. And after talking about all these things, the Bible says he who has the son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do you have the Son of God? If you do have the Son of God and had given up and said, well, I'm going to the world's ways, I've given up on waiting, I want to give you an opportunity to return to the Lord and recommit to live for Him. And if you had never given your life to Jesus, I want to challenge you. Now is the time. The Bible says, if you hear the voice of the Lord to Day. Harden not your heart. Give him your life. You can have hope. You can have peace. You can have strength for life's journey. I want us to pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you have given us so much. You have given us abilities, gifts, passions. You have given us so much that we can use even in this time to be a blessing not just to our families but to others around us. We can go out and make a difference. Father, it's been a difficult time and many might still be in that state where they actually don't know what to do. I am asking that if they are a child of God, if they are a believer, Holy Spirit, remind them of who they are, of the promises you have given them. May they rise up, dust their shoes and their feet, and begin to believe you for a new season, a new chapter, a new direction. And Father, I want to pray for all those listening, all those who will watch this, this uh, service, and they have not given their lives to Jesus. I pray that, Lord, in this moment, they would pray along and declare Lord, I am a sinner. I have failed in life. I have tried my own way. I have done it all. But I realize 
that I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I need the work of Calvary to wash my sins away. I want to declare today that I want to believe that Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again. He has been given the keys of life that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Lord, I want to accept of the work of Jesus' death on the cross. I ask you to save me. I ask you to give me a new lease of life. Give me a new desire to live for you, to reach the fulfillment of your purpose for my life. Thank you, Jesus, because you accept all those who come to you in faith, believing for salvation. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you strong. May he keep you trusting step by step, day by day. Like the Israelites in the wilderness who had manna for days. Each day they had manna for each day. May you hide in the presence of the Lord. May the word of the Lord be your steady guide, step by step. And may he continue to preserve us and help us to remain a blessing. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Amen.